Uh, today we have some 1,200 billionaires on the planet, many of which got enthused during the early Apollo days, the U.S.-Soviet race to the moon, and they've said, you know, why hasn't it happened? Why hasn't the future of space materialized? Why is it still expensive and still unreliable? And they're investing heavily. We're going to see a new entrepreneurial generation of launch capabilities. Now, once we do that, the ability to open up the space frontier is magical. People are going to start going out to mine asteroids. Uh, people don't recognize that there are these half kilometer nickel iron asteroids that are worth in the order of 20 to 30 trillion dollars. Uh, literally the first trillionaires we made in space as they go out. You're going to have individuals going out and starting new societies. Uh, inviting people, small population centers, really backing up the Earth's biosphere with the genetic stock and the information uh, content of the web and building a, a self-enclosed habitat and heading off in their own direction and practicing pure democracy, a pure form of religion, whatever. You'll have literally uh, sociological experiments going on where pods of humanity begin to experiment in how they govern themselves, what they think, and how they evolve. Uh, it is going to be a magical time, but the key to this is how to get off the planet in a reliable fashion. So, you know, why should the average person care about this? Well, it's an amazing, exciting time. It's inspirational. The notion that in the next few decades, the human race is going to irreversibly move off the planet. Not a thousand years from now, not a million years from now. In fact, millions of years from now, people will look back at these next few decades as the moment in time when life evolved off the Earth into space. Just like those magical lungfish moved out of the oceans onto land. And you're part of it. It's happening now for yourself and for your children. And that's significant. It gives people hope. There are, there are two things going on that are magical for me. First of all, we have uh, an increasing capability of information technology driving towards limited AI. Uh, we have at the XPRIZE Foundation something called the uh, Progressive Automotive XPRIZE where we're developing new generation of cars. The next prize we're looking at after that is actually an AI-enabled car that can drive itself. You know, literally, you land at the airport, you call, and the car drives itself to where you are, picks you up, and then takes you where you want to go. Now, what's interesting about that is, uh, first of all, it can save 50,000 lives a year because we lose 50,000 lives in the United States alone in auto accidents, and an AI can drive a car far better than a human can. Uh, we can make our cars lighter so they can save more fuel, and we can get rid of this terrible congestion because the cars can all speak to each other and sort of strategically say, I'll go this way if you go that way and avoid the congestion in the middle. So we've got that level of technology. Um, we're talking about AI physicians. Imagine, you know, I, I think one of the X prizes we're looking at is the idea of an artificially intelligent physician uh, that you speak to in, in plain language and you tell it, what it where it hurts, what you ate, how old you are and all of that. And it, it tells you, listen, you likely have this, get yourself to the hospital or, you know, take some Alka-Seltzers and go to bed. Uh, but that uh, all of a sudden takes the level of healthcare around the world to an equal point. Imagine if an AI could speak Swahili, you know, could speak any language at all and could literally tell someone independent of any money they had what was wrong with them. So we are have the ability to revolutionize healthcare and transportation in many industries through AI. I am on an airplane every single day and it gets old really fast, even if it's my own airplane and I'm, I'm flying my single engine from a place to place. But I'm hopeful that in the next few years we're going to have a really excellent telepresence. In fact, my friend Bert Rutan, who won the first uh, Ansari X Prize, jokes that in fact telepresence and, and Televideo conferencing is going to destroy the uh, the aviation community because it's going to you know if you can have an interaction like we're having right now uh, without having to get on an airplane, uh, it really is going to allow people to send their their bits and not their atoms. About a year and a half ago, I had the opportunity to fly Stephen Hawking on our zero G airplane, and when I, I had met Stephen Hawking through the Archon X Prize for genomics. And he said that his dream was to fly into space. And I asked him why. And the answer he came back said that he did not believe that the human race had a future unless we got into space. Uh, my friend Elon Musk calls it backing up the biosphere. The notion that uh, we have all of our eggs in one basket, 
that we are liable for biological disaster, asteroid, war, whatever it might be. You know, when the Library of Alexandria burned, it took a thousand years to regather that information. So the question is, if there was a devastation here, and we didn't have the Earth's uh, information biosphere backed up, we'd be losing something terrible.